welcome back let's continue with our uh, lecture on mathematical methods we have been looking at the contour integrals uh, especially residue theorem we have used the residue theorem to evaluate integrals of uh, real valued function so this is a part of a course ph uh, 3103 at uh, isar calcutta we will look at the more contour integrals and uh, their application to evaluate the principal values of a real value function so the first let's uh, look at the functions with the singularities on x axis so far we have evaluated the integrals of real valued function which are continuous on the x axis that is when we take the complex valued function f of z is equal to p of z by q of z has a no singular point on the x axis how this would change if there are singularities on uh, x axis so let's uh, look at this there are techniques using the indented contours we can uh, evaluate the principal value of the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx by residue theorem to evaluate the integral by residue theorem which has a pole at uh, z is equal to c where z is a real number we can use a indented contour briefly explain uh, uh, what is indented contour with this uh, diagram we have uh, several singularities of function f of z in the complex plane in the earlier case we have avoided functions which has a singular point on x axis but in this case we consider there is at least uh, one singular point or pole simple pole on x axis in such case in such case we cannot uh, use uh, our earlier method in which uh, we have uh, taken the integral uh, along the real axis from minus r to plus r because we have a singular point at uh, z is equal to c so we have to we have to use a technique of a indented contour so in the case of indented contour you use a, a semicircular uh, contour c of r centered around z is equal to c and oriented in the positive direction that is uh, we cover up this uh, singularity on real axis using a semicircular contour c of r with the radius uh, r and the uh, origin at uh, z is equal to c and then we proceed with the taking the integral from minus r to all the way till the contour and then use the circular arc to avoid this uh, singular point and then come back to the real axis and continue with the value of uh, integral so this is essentially is the uh, technique of uh, indented con we proceed uh, as before using this important point is to evaluate the integral of this function on the contour c of small r and take the limit r going to zero for the outer contour c of capital r as r going to infinity every time we had to evaluate and uh, ensure that that uh, integral goes to zero before uh, using the method but in this case we have a theorem suppose f of z as a simple pole at uh, z is equal to c on real axis if cr is the contour defined by z is equal to c plus r into e power i theta for uh, theta going from uh, zero to pi that is a half circular r let's uh, describe this with the diagram we have a point z is equal to c on a real axis as a simple pole and then uh, we consider c of r a circular r centered uh, at z is equal to c with the radius uh, small r then we take the limit the small r going to zero and evaluate the contour integral of the function along cr and then uh, show that the limit r going to zero integral along the contour cr f of z dz is equal to pi into i into residue of f of z at uh, z is equal to c in the residue theorem we have a close contour in this case we are using only half uh, circular contour and then taking the limit r going to zero that is why we have a pi times uh, i into residue of f of z at the z is equal to c let's try to prove this
Since f of z has a simple pole at z is equal to c, its Lorentz series can be expressed as f of z is equal to a minus 1 divided by z by c plus g of z. Here a minus 1 is the residue of f of z is equal to c and g of z is an analytic function at z is equal to c. With the convention of uh, Lorentz series, we know that the, if the function has a simple pole only, then there is uh, no negative powers higher than uh, z is equal to minus 1. So, we have the series terminates at uh, z is equal to minus 1, that is uh, a minus 1 divided by z minus c plus g of z. Let's uh, evaluate this uh, integral by substituting the f of z with the Lorentz expansion which we have done. Integral over the contour cr f of z dz is equal to minus a minus 1 integral 0 to pi into i integral 0 to pi i r into e power i theta divided by r e power i theta d theta. The second term which is coming from the g of z is uh, i into r integral 0 to pi g of uh, c plus r e power i theta e power i theta d theta. The first term we can call is that uh, i1, second term we call it as a i2 and uh, individually evaluate this integral. Let's look at the first term which is i1 as uh, a minus 1 integral 0 to pi. Then we simplify it takes the simple form of uh, uh, 0 to pi d theta and uh, its uh, value is uh, pi i into residue of f of z evaluated at c because uh, a minus 1 is simply is the residue of the function at z is equal to c. So, we have uh, got the required result that means uh, somehow we have to show that the i2 have to be 0. So, let us look at that too. Let us look at term i2 which is uh, i into r integral 0 to pi g of uh, c plus r e power i theta into e power i theta d theta. We know that the function is analytic. If a function is analytic at a point uh, z is equal to z0, we can always construct a small neighborhood around z0 such that the function is uh, bound inside the neighborhood is a condition for the analytic function. If the function blows up, then it can't be analytic in that neighborhood. So, this essentially reflect as a existing the upper bound for the function in a small neighborhood if it is uh, analytic at a point z is equal to z0. In this case, uh, z is equal to c which is on real axis. So, we have a bound for the integral from 0 to pi g of uh, c plus r e power i theta e power i theta d theta should be always less than or equal to a number m. Now, i2 is comes as a i r into m or i2 always have to be less than or equal to i r into m. Now, if we take a limit r going to 0, we get uh, i2 to be 0. It is uh, rather straightforward once we have this uh, use this result. Now, we have a limit r going to 0 integral of contour c r f of z dz that is i1 is given by pi into i residue of f of z at z is equal to c. So, this is the result which we are interested. The one of the advantage of uh, this result is that once we have to use the indented contour, we know the value of the integral, we can straight away use this uh, theorem. However, in the case of uh, outer contour that is which we take all the way to infinity, there every time we have to evaluate and ensure that it goes to 0 as uh, limit r going to infinity. Let us look at a quick example. In this case, uh, evaluate the Cauchy's principal value integral from minus infinity to plus infinity sin x divided by x into x square minus 2x plus 2. So, this is the integral which we have to evaluate uh, clearly. The complex function which uh, we would like to study is uh, e power i z divided by z into z square minus 2z plus 2. Now, clearly 
the alpha term in this case is 1 which is coming from sin alpha x. So, we simply have e power i z as our uh, function. We see that the f of z has uh, three simple poles at z is equal to 0 and uh, z is equal to plus or minus i. So, since there is a uh, one singular point on a real axis. So, we will have to use the indented uh, contour for uh, evaluating this uh, integral. So, we essentially try to avoid the simple pole at z is equal to 0 and uh, consider the contour which uh, include the singularity at uh, z is equal to plus i. Let us look at the figure here uh, we avoid the singularity at uh, z is equal to 0 using the intended contour c r. We have simple pole at uh, z is equal to 0 and one more singularity along the positive imaginary axis is at uh, z is equal to plus i minus i is not along the positive imaginary axis. So, only plus is what we need. Now, we avoid the simple pole at uh, z is equal to 0 using the contour c r or minus c r because uh, we are going in a counter going in the negative direction and then uh, we cover the singularity at uh, z is equal to 1 plus i using the contour c capital R and we ignore the singularity at uh, z is equal to 1 minus i. We start our contour from minus capital R, go all the way till minus small r along the real axis. Then we deviate along the contour C r to avoid the singularity at z is equal to 0 and uh, reach uh, plus r back to real axis along the contour C r. Note that we are moving along clockwise direction on the curve C r that is why we have a minus sign there and then from plus small r we proceed to capital R along the real axis then from plus r we reach back to minus r along the circular arc C of uh, capital R and uh, that C of capital R should include the singularity at uh, z is equal to 1 plus i and we take the limit uh, capital R going to infinity small r going to 0 and then we use the earlier theorem to evaluate the integral. Let us uh, once again uh, look at this uh, integral, integral along close contour c f of z dz is equal to integral along close contour c e power i z dz divided by z into z square minus 2 z plus 2. This uh, integral have to be evaluated along the contour c given in the figure. We know that the value is equal to 2 pi i times the only residue inside the contour that is the uh, residue of, of z at uh, z is equal to 1 plus i. The contour c can be split exactly into four term. The first term is along the real axis from minus capital R to minus small r e power i x dx divided by x into x square minus 2 x plus 2. And then the second contour is uh, with the negative sign along the circular r c r e power i z dz divided by z into z square minus 2 z plus 2. The third term is again along the real axis from uh, plus r to plus capital R e power i x dx divided by x into x square minus 2 x plus 2. The last term is uh, coming along the circular R capital C R e power i z dz divided by z into z square minus 2 z plus 2 and the results of this is a uh, 2 pi i times the residue of uh, f of z at uh, 1 plus i. Let us uh, carefully look at the value of uh, each of these integral. It is easy to show that in this case this integral will go to 0 because in the numerator we have a z to the power 3 eventually resulting in the r to the power 3 
and uh, r going to infinity this term would uh, make the integral going to 0. Now from the earlier theorem we have this term resulting in the value pi times i residue of uh, f of uh, z at uh, z is equal to 0 the radius of uh, r small r going to 0. Then we have left with the two terms uh, which uh, can be combined as a limit uh, small r going to uh, 0. This takes the principal value of the integral which we are interested in. It should be e power i x not uh, sin x. So this is the uh, integral which we are interested in. So we need to evaluate the residue of the function f of z that is equal to e power i z divided by z into z square minus 2z plus 2 at z is equal to 0 and at uh, z is equal to plus i. We can uh, straightforward evaluate the residue at uh, z is equal to 0 and uh, it turns out to be half. Well, I will say you can also evaluate the residue of the function f of z at uh, z is equal to 1 plus i and it turns out to be minus e power minus 1 plus i divided by 4 into 1 minus i. Once we have the residue, the principal value of the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e power i x divided by x into x square minus 2x plus 2 dx is given as a pi times i divided by 2 plus 2 pi i times the residue of the f of z at uh, z is equal to plus 1. One can evaluate this and uh, so the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity cos x divided by all these terms can be the real value of the this uh, residue that uh, we have obtained. Same way we can obtain the uh, uh, sign term 2 taking the imaginary of the integral which we obtained uh, using the residue theorem. So one can uh, simplify this further but I will leave it, it at this stage. It is just simple algebra to calculate the real and imaginary part. There are some simple tricks one can use it at this stage. Uh, those are uh, not really important. Our goal is to choose the contour and uh, evaluate the integral not compute uh, some uh, functions of uh, complex value but that can be done. Now there is a homework problem which also makes you think a little bit. So you evaluate uh, this integral which we have already done you might say but I want you to do it in a slightly different way. I want you to use the contour given in this uh, figure where uh, the indented contour you use not as given by the theorem but in the opposite direction. So now you are including the both singularity at z is equal to 0 and uh, z is equal to 1 plus i. You have to sum both this singularity but somehow only half value is uh, incorporated in this case because uh, we are uh, including. So I want you to work this out and uh, see if the result is same or different. If it is uh, same then you can compare whether this also is a viable method for evaluating integral. If it is different then uh, you got to tell why it is different and why this cannot be used to evaluate the integral.